2019 Harley Davidson Heritage Softail. I'm at a Harley Davidson test ride event right now. I'm going to start off by saying I don't know a lot about Harley Davidson or their bikes. I, uh, I'm just here to find some stuff out and do a quick, you know, ride by review. Bye bye. So far, the uh, I kind of like this Heritage because uh, I got off of another Harley here recently, and it was pretty heavy. This one, uh, this one feels right in the middle of the weight. It seems like it's not real small, but it's not real heavy at the same time. Um, as far as the displacement difference, honestly, I don't. I think this one has a little bit less of an in engine size as far as the CC or the uh, cubic inch, but um, I can tell you that that doesn't really matter because, well. The, the weight of the bike makes up the difference. Looks like it idles around 900 RPMs roughly, but it can drop all the way to 7. Then they fill that big cam. Uh, Self-canceling turn signals. The turn signals are on... Well, on both sides of the handlebars, which is kind of strange. Um, you gotta press the one on the left, and then it turns on, and then self cancels when you turn. Then the one on the right does the same thing. I'm used to then everything just being over here on the left. Um, it's honestly, it's a little bit of a, a learning curve. I mean, just, just it, it's not hard. It's just you know, it's it's not the norm. Honestly, uh, power's not too bad on this. Uh, it gets up and goes. It's definitely not, uh, I, I typically ride a lot of sport bike engines, you know, sport bike style, you know, motorcycles. But um, I gotta be honest with you, uh, you know, the, the grunt on the bottom is actually really good. And I'll, uh, I'll get the actual dimensions of the engine uh, before the end of this. I'll actually like take a look at the side of the bike and everything so you can see exactly what I'm looking at here. But uh, it's got a pretty good little grunt. It's not really my style. But uh, it definitely has some grunt to it. Give Harley Davidson this. They uh, they've got some pretty uh, elaborate, you know, paint jobs on here. I mean, like, and uh, not really elaborate, but they're just really good looking. Definitely want to hit this thing on the bottom. It just it, it, letting the RPMs build up does not do it any favors. Um, it's just it seems like the characteristic of this motor, um, Harley motors in general. Because I have rode a few Harleys in, in my time, but. Seems like the characteristics of these motors are they're they're built for bottom end torque and then that's it pure bottom end. By the time you get to the mid range, they really flatten off and then high output is definitely you know high end power is definitely not a uh, definitely not something you're going to get off of a Harley Davidson motorcycle. At least not any one that I've ridden. Now I'm going to be out today riding a few Harley Davidsons and I uh, I will tell you that there's one out here that I I'm gonna I, I'm really excited to get the chance to be on because. It actually looks like it's strictly performance driven. It's like an FSXR or something. I'm, and I'm probably wrong on that, but it actually looks uh, quite performance driven. And I'm, uh, I'm excited to be able to take that out and uh, try it out for the first time. I may find my first Harley Davidson that I actually like. And I'm not trying to be a Harley hater. It's just I have a certain expectation from my motorcycles that I need them to uphold. And um, usually Harley doesn't quite do it for me. Eh. And that, that may be my youthfulness, but uh, I prefer, I'm a performance, I prefer performance driven motorcycles. I, I like the fact that a lot of motorcycles are uh, faster than your average car. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of bang for your buck if you want, you know, zero to 60, you know, very quickly. And Harley usually isn't, uh, you know, trying to deliver those things. Their they're, they're comfort, you know, low end grunt, stoplight to stoplight, you know, or touring model bikes that can, uh, 
you know, take you a long distance comfortably. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not, I'm not harping on Harley. I'm not saying anything about, you know, the, the, the style of motorcycle that they deliver. I mean, that that's their niche, their niche, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, I mean, they obviously do very well at it because they've been making motorcycles for a long time. So, uh, as far as the Heritage Softail, um, this is going to be a very quick review, mind you. Don't, uh, don't, don't, and take everything I say with a grain of salt. Uh, again, I'm not a Harley guy. Um, so far, I actually, you know, I actually enjoy being on this bike. I feel like, uh, around town, it's actually pretty nice. It, uh, it's very comfortable. Good ergonomics. Real good ergonomics. The seating position is very, it's very good. I mean, it's definitely a lot more comfortable than a sport bike, for sure. Um, I'm a big guy. You know, I'm like almost 300 pounds and uh, six foot three, and uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'd have no problem commuting on this thing, and it, it has plenty of bottom end grunt to get you around town. You're not winning any drag races against any sport bikes or anything like that, but that's really not what this bike's meant to do. It definitely has the power to dive out into traffic and get you up to speed fast enough that you can stay out of harm's way, and I think that really is what matters. It's got good low end pull. It really does. At 2,000 RPMs of fourth gear, I can hit it, and I mean, it doesn't lunge forward, but it definitely jumps up about 10 miles an hour pretty quickly, which, if that, I mean, you can, you're definitely not going to have any problem weaving in and out of traffic and outrunning a lot of, you know, your average cars on the road with this thing. You'll be able to get out of harm's way pretty quickly, and I think that's what's important on a motorcycle is the ability to do that. You're going to, you need that little bit of extra power so that you can get out of these these guys and on four wheels way because they're going to run you over if they're not paying attention and the only thing you can do to prevent that is to just get out of their way and be safe on your own and uh this motorcycle definitely has the oomph to be able to do that i mean you're not you're not going to get yourself into too many situations where you won't be able to just handle what's going on that's for sure the self-canceling turn signals seem to work pretty well honestly i mean i um you know, you, it comes on, and it's on right now, and then it, it, it stays on through the length of the turn, and then I guess it has some type of accelerometer in here. Uh, once I finish my turn, it just turns itself off, which is pretty nice. Wow. This bike has some good pull up to about 3,500 RPMs, and then that's where it really starts to taper off. I'm really not sure what the red line is on it because it, it has a digital uh, tachometer on it. And I don't, uh, I don't know what like the maximum RPM you can take this thing to is. I could find out real quick by downshifting, but it's not my bike, and I don't want to abuse it. Um, but it definitely has enough grunt to where if you pop through the gears fairly quickly, it's going to carry you up to speed very quick. Uh, another thing I should mention is, again, I'm a big guy. We're on the highway right now. Uh, we're doing about 50 miles per hour. This, run, this bike's running in sixth gear about 1800 RPMs and it still has no problem getting on the gas and accelerating forward. Again, this bike has a lot of low end torque. And uh, if you're looking for a bike that you can cruise around and just kind of stoplight to stoplight, it really doesn't matter what gear you're in. I mean, so you can definitely look at something like this. You can definitely look at any Harley Davidson with the engine characteristics they, you know, that they're going to give you. And uh, honestly, this this soft tail, this 2019 soft tail I'm on, I mean, it's just it's kind of like it's right for commuting. So if you're going to work or if you're you know if you're just bumping around town, I mean. It, uh, it definitely seems like a good bike to have. It definitely seems like you wouldn't have any problem putting miles on it. You wouldn't want to get off of it. The way the seat kind of hugs your butts, uh, I'm a big guy again, so it may just be me. It's kind of odd. And the floorboards seem like they're a little long on it, in my opinion. I mean, I guess that gives you a really good placement. Um, I, I, my legs kind of stick out a little bit further. But uh, they definitely have good clearance on them. You can definitely put your foot underneath the brake pedal and it not be like getting caught on there whenever you go to raise it back up to apply the rear brake. Uh, same thing with the shifter. It's really easy to get your foot out from underneath it. So the spacing is actually fairly, is actually pretty good, on, honestly. Uh, the brakes work pretty good too. The bike seems very minimalist, in my opinion. Um, it's not very technologically advanced, as far as there's no touch screens, there's no, you know, there's not a lot of extra stuff that you gotta deal with while you're going down the road. It, uh, it looks like it has cruise control, which is nice. Um, I haven't attempted it yet, but it definitely has it. Um, but it doesn't, doesn't seem like there's a lot of stuff that would uh, get clunky and get in your way. Um, I actually 
honestly, I just took off. No joke. Um, I thought I was in first gear. Um, that is a complaint I'll have about this bike. Um, and I'll get, get with you on right now. Um, it's very, the LCD or LED or whatever the screen is down here that gives you your gear indicators and your RPM range. It's very hard to read in direct sunlight. Um, but uh, to, to give it some props, this motorcycle in general, I just took off in third gear. I literally just took off in third gear and it pulled itself from a dead stop up to speed it, it didn't like it but it did it so you know that, that's there's something to be said there about the low end torque of this motorcycle it definitely has enough grunt on the bottom to get you where you're going you're not gonna have to worry about that it definitely doesn't like to downshift while you're setting still best to downshift before you get to a dead stop because if you don't um you'll run into a situation where I did right there. I, I clicked it you know, at least 20 times down, down and, I, and I even rocked the bike to try and change gears a little bit. It actually did not actually make its way down into first gear and I couldn't actually see in direct sunlight uh, that number indicator. I just assumed I was in first gear and I was wrong. Um, but again, the bike had plenty of power and was able to get me uh, up to speed. And uh, that, that's, definitely, that's definitely a nice feature. I like that back tire on the bike that the, the leader of the pack here is running. Um, I don't know what bike that is specifically, but it, it, I do like the design of that back tire. It looks very grippy. All right, so she cuts out about 4,500 RPMs. That's where this bike starts to taper off and lose all of its pull. It literally is falling on its face at that point. So I'm guessing the red line is somewhere around 5,000 to 5,500. It really starts to flat line at 44 or like 4,500 RPMs, and you really lose the, the the bottom end grunt that you feel. But because the light, the bike is so light, it really does just push itself up to 50, 60 miles an hour with no effort at all. In traffic, this bike is going to do, you know, even highway riding, this bike's going to have no problems uh, getting you where you want to go. I would, however, like to take this bike out into some serious turns and see how well it handles. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shut my uh, visor here because the wind buffeting right now is insane. We just have a really strong wind yeah, in this direction. But um, I would like to take it out into some twisty turns and just see how it uh, how it handles the turns. Because I can tell you right now, I don't know what kind of tires they have on this bike, but it does not, in my opinion, want to uh, be, you know, be dipped duck to dive you know you, you really can't whip it around and just you know make command this thing across the street the way you want to it's more of like i'm very happy going straight and uh, uh it will turn but it just it, it's it's happy it's very happy uh just in a straight line it's it seems like it's a little unsettling to the motorcycle to uh try and really dive it into a corner it just doesn't seem like it does it wants to do that very much in my opinion And it, it could just specifically be attributed to the tires they have on this motorcycle. You know, depending on the roundness of it, the, the, the width of the tire, everything like that. There's a, there's a lot that gets taken into consideration whenever, you know, the handling characteristics of the bike come. It's very possible that you could, uh, you know, you could want, you could change the tires on this thing and it can become quite nimble. Just right now, it just, it just fights me whenever I want to like, when I want to, you know, pace back and forth in the lane and kind of wiggle it around a little bit it just doesn't seem like it enjoys it as much in my opinion um and i i mean maybe i'm just spoiled from riding sport bikes but um i have a cruiser i have a kawasaki vulcan s and i'm here to tell you that thing will uh, it'll keep up with any sport bike in the twisties so uh, this bike no you you would you would not feel very confident it seems like diving into a corner very fast with this or die or coming out of a corner very fast with this and that, that, you know, maybe a more experienced uh, rider of bigger, heavier bikes, you know, may feel differently. But I've ridden a lot of bikes, and I'm here to tell you, this one is not very forgiving with it. It doesn't seem like it wants to help you do it any. It seems like you're going to have to work at it a little bit. There we go. All right, I got some turns with some bumps. 35 mile an hour speed limit guys i'm definitely not doing that but um the idea here is to get the characteristics of the handling and to see how well she'll take these turns guys with it not too bad you know handles like a it handles like a stack of bricks you know i mean it feels like turning the corner but um 
very planted. I'm actually coming in a little hot on this one, I feel like. I'm moving just a, just a hair faster than I want to be. Um, but you know what? I'm going to commit to it and see what she'll do. Even though the road is a little bumpy, the suspension stays very firm and it holds the tires to the ground. And that's honestly what you want, guys. You want to be able to rely on your suspension to do its job. It's not very boingy. It's very, very firm and it holds itself to the ground. It's not that it's not soft. It's just that the suspension is doing a very good job of keeping the fork on the ground. And that's what's going to give you your traction. So um, yeah, in, in that book, it actually did wonderful in that corner. Honestly, I was a little slightly worried about the front end kind of having a little bit of bob to it but uh no it helped very nice very nice now once you get going honestly once you're up to speed a little bit not too bad to top gear and see how it handles on the highway. I'm doing about 60 miles an hour right now. Feels pretty good, 65, honestly. Uh, not too bad on the wind buffeting, actually. That's more of my helmet than it is anything um, with this bike. Uh, the, uh, the windscreen is very solid. You don't really feel a lot of vibration coming from the wind, which is nice. And uh, it pulls itself beautifully down the road at 65 miles an hour. It has in my opinion, it, it, it does not care. You could easily run the spike up to 80 miles an hour and I think it would pull just fine. You wouldn't really even have to work it very hard to get it to do it. And I'm still in fifth gear right now after getting on the highway around 45. And I gotta be honest with you, it's very comfortable right here. You don't need to shift around a lot on this bike. That's nice. When you're going in and out of traffic and you're riding around town, being able to just stay in a gear is really nice. It'll keep your hand from wearing out a lot, I promise you. It's, it, it can be actually pretty nice to not have to change gears all the time just to, to keep in your power. Have a broad power band, you know, where you can really kind of just pick a gear like third and stay there if you wanted to or fourth. That's, that, I'm telling you, when it's a daily driver, that could mean a lot, in my opinion. Well, we're about to wrap it back around, back to the Harley dealership, and uh, thanks Harley Davidson for letting me come out and try out your motorcycle. I really appreciate it. I don't think I'm going to be taking one home, but uh, I did enjoy the experience of being able to come out here and uh, try something new, you know, break the mold and just not do the same thing every day. Um, I, I get this bike, you know, as far as a commuter bike, not a tour, just you know, your, you know, your working man's bike. He's going to drive it around every day. I'd say that it's. Uh, I say it's probably like a solid, you know, six to six to seven out of ten, you know, as far as like, you know, if I'd want to commute on it every day. And uh, the only reason I'm knocking it like that is just because, it, like I said, it seems like it wants to fight you just a hair whenever it comes to cornering. Um, the controls are a little bulky in my opinion. Like the clutch is huge. Uh, it's just not very light to the pull. And uh, I, I enjoy a bike that I don't have to work very hard to pull the clutch. I want it to be a very light pull. Uh, I want a firm feel, but a light pull. Um, it also gets very hot and an idle. Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on with that, but um, man, my, I'm telling you, my uh, my nuts are roasting right now. The heat coming up off the side of this motor is just, uh, it's intense. I understand it's a large engine, but they don't do a very good job of venting the heat away from your legs. And it's, it's actually a beautiful 70 degree day right now. And uh, I feel like my legs are a little too hot. If it was 90 to 100 outside, which it is on average where I'm at in the summer, um, this bike would get kind of annoying to ride because the heat would be rising up on you and it would um well it would it, it would make you sweat a lot more in the stop and go stuff and i don't think that's a deal breaker or anything like that it's just you know I'm, I'm trying to review this bike as accurately as i can and give people information on it and um well i mean that's to, to me that that's something you should know how comfortable is the bike how much do you want to ride it like that, that those are things that i think need to be answered
still pulling out. Go ahead and step out of their way. Uh, but here you go. There's a shot of the bike I was on. 107 cubic inches was the uh, the CC or the, uh, the the cubic inch. Um, and CCs, that's probably. I mean, I don't know the conversion, but it's probably up there. You know, over 1500, somewhere to 15 to 1700 cc, something like that. Um, it uh, it ran fine. Not my really, not really my style of motorcycle, but um, it definitely ran good. And I feel like a lot of people wouldn't have a problem commuting on this thing on a daily basis. All right, that's it for the 2019 Harley Davidson Soft Tail Heritage. And uh, thanks for checking out this video. And again, take my opinion for the, with a grain of salt, just because um, I'm not a Harley guy. If this was a Yamaha or a Kawasaki or a Honda, if it was a sport bike, I would know a lot more and I would be able to give you a better review of my opinion. But uh, on this one specifically, I think uh, not having that knowledge, I think I gave you the best review I could. So uh, thanks for hanging out and I'll see you later.